Is SpaceX Starlink going broke? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. No more stormy weather. I'm feeling much better. It's the new year, guys. It's the new year's. Welcome. Can you imagine? Happy New Year. 2023. Amazing. We've made it. This is kind of crazy. It's going to be a good year, I have a feeling. A good year. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're going to be talking about Starlink and Elon Musk and what he's been saying lately. And then also the Motley Fool, what they're talking about with a possible IPO. And they're kind of poo-pooing on this company a little bit and saying, you know, it's not really worth as much as people think that it is. And there's a lot of folks out there that are saying the same thing. There's like, can SpaceX Starlink hang in there? Or are they just going to simply go belly up? Can they not afford it? We see Elon Musk for a while saying, hey, you know, I can't keep on just funding the Ukraine and all those antennas that are sitting over there. They're little dishies, right? My Mr. Bevel. But... It's a difficult task to be able to keep spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars on something that you're not getting any type of return on it. But before I get into all this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my ebooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jcristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you're looking for a VPN and you're looking to secure your family or your business, go check out Pure VPN. That is the VPN company that I'm currently using. And after reaching out to them, they provided me with a link. That direct link is going to give you close to, I think, 80% or maybe even over 80% off. So go check that out. So what Elon Musk has said is that he is looking to use Starlink not only to fund Mars, his mission to Mars, but also all of his companies. He feels that Starlink is going to be that cash cow. It's not going to be him ferrying satellites into outer space for other companies and that whole, let's call it SpaceX side of things. The Starlink is where that he's going to make the majority of his money. Now, Elon Musk has said that SpaceX Starlink should be able to make about $30 billion per year and possibly even in upwards of $72 billion per year. And the Motley Fool came back and said, you know, this is just not going to happen. I know there's going to be an IPO coming out soon, possibly in 2023. But when they analyzed the company, they said, you know, this is just doesn't make sense to us. We cannot see how he's going to get to those numbers. And they gave a description of why they say it. And I just think that they are wrong. And I'm going to tell you why in just a second. Now, if you recall, there were supposed to be about 12,000 satellites in short term placed into LEO by Elon Musk for SpaceX Starlink. And currently there's about 3,000 plus that are up there operational. Now, what people forget is the end goal was always 42,000 satellites. So you have to take that into consideration on how broad this is going to be. This will be internet for the planet. This will not just be internet around the bulge. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to see internet on the ice caps also. That is the south as well as the north pole. And he's doing it already. But a lot more will be launched. Once again, we're at 3,000. He's looking at 12,000 short-term and 42,000 long-term. Now, what the Motley Fool said, and I'll read it word for word. He said, this is how the math would work. At the last report in June, Starlink had approximately 500,000 subscribers to the satellite internet service. SpaceX started out charging these customers $99 per month and due to inflation has raised it. Now, SpaceX announced in March that they would raise the monthly charge to $110 per month. And that is absolutely the case. $110 a month times 12 months a year multiplied by 500,000 customers amounts to about $660 million in revenue. That's per year. Not too bad, not too shabby, but not what he was speculating of 30 billion or 72 billion. I'll get into that in just a second. Even with a few customers paying higher rates for premium service, i.e. more bandwidth, 
a few more business as well as maritime customers paying even more than that, and a bit of one-time revenue for sales of the hardware needed to run Starlink, less than $300 million in total. It would appear today that Starlink is still, at best, a $1 billion business. And I think that's just completely off. They're just not seeing it. They just don't. I mean, they're, they are talking about maritime. They're talking about business clients and whatnot, but they're just not seeing how much this can equate to. Well, a really nice friend of the show and long-term subscriber wrote in and sent me over some pictures from a cruise that he just took. And I thought that this was very fascinating. I'm going to show these to you. But what this is, is he's showing how Starlink is already installed on these different cruise lines. Now, he ended up taking Carnival Cruise. But take a look at these pictures, all right? Do you see all of these terminals? Do you see all these antennas? There's one, two, three, four, five, six times two. So you're looking at 12 antennas up here. That's 12 Starlinks pointing at the sky. Now, if we go over to Starlink's website, it says high speed, low latency internet with up to 350 megabits download while at sea. $5,000 per month with a one-time hardware cost of $10,000 for two high performance terminals. So when we look at this, we can see that there is 12 high performance terminals, right? And they get two for each one of these packages. So what does this equate to? Well, if you take the 12 antennas and you multiply it by $10,000, that is the actual cost of it, would be $120,000, but then you divide it in half because they get two for each one. So it's $60,000 worth of hardware sitting on this ship. Now, the cost of it is $5,000 per service, right? And you get two. So they have six service plans. That's another $30,000. So the bottom line here is what this equates to is $60,000 for the equipment and $30,000 per month just to have the service. Now, bear in mind, this means that if they have six service plans on that ship, each service plan will give them five terabytes of data. After that, guess what? they get charged $2 per gigabyte for overage fees. So what does this come to? You're looking at five terabytes times six. So you're looking at 30 terabytes of data. And that's all that they're going to get. Now, I was researching this. I want to see a Carnival Cruise Line. You know, they have a bunch of different ships. What is the average number of customers or passengers? They run from about 4,000 passengers to 6,000 maximum capacity. So I was thinking about this, 30 terabytes of data for the month's time. All right, 30 terabytes of data for the month with, let's say, 5,000 passengers. We'll take the mean between the 4,000 and 6,000. Let's call it 5,000 passengers. That is like a drop in the bucket. That's just for one cruise. Now, that's a seven-day cruise, let's call it. Well, you got another four cruises that can possibly happen during that time frame. So just keep that in mind. Maybe they go on two for the month. You still have 14 days of 4,000 customers. Now we turn that into 8,000 customers. 30 terabytes is nothing. Trust me, it is absolutely nothing. I mean, myself can go over one terabyte for a month. Just me, not 4,000 me. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. So overage is going to be a major issue. Now, most likely Carnival Cruise Line or any other cruise lines are not going to come out of pocket for those overage fees. They're going to be shuttled or funneled to the passengers themselves. Or will they? So I was doing some math on this too, because Brett was nice enough to send over how much he paid to have the service on the cruise line. Come to find out, Brett paid $17 a day for the seven days. So it was about $120 for his trip. Now, they didn't state that there was any limits, so let's call it no limits. Once again, we get into overage issues here if they don't put a limit on the passengers. According to what he's saying, he's not seeing any limits. That's very interesting, right? Keep that in mind. So once again, let's do a little bit of math here. If 50% of the people on the ship, the passengers, actually want internet, all right, that would be 2,500 passengers times $120 for those seven days would equate to about 
$300,000 for those seven days. Not bad, not bad at all. If they're paying 30,000 plus overage fees, not bad. Now, even if we go even more conservative and take that number in half, instead of 2,500 of the 5,000 passengers getting internet, only let's call it 1,250 people do. Still not bad. They're looking at $150,000 for those seven days. Once again, outlaying 30,000 per month plus overage fees. So as of right now, I think they're going to be doing pretty well, even with possible overages. It really depends. $2 per gigabyte is a lot of money. $2 per gigabyte. Think about that. So 1,000 gigabytes would be $2,000, right? 1,000 gigabytes, that's just one extra terabyte. It's a lot of money. Now, what Brett did say was that he had access to the internet for the most part. There was only a few websites that he went to that were blocked and a redirect web page popped up and it said something like, this site is not available at sea. So why they do that, I really don't know, but that's just simply the way it is. What he did say was he was able to surf the majority of the web as well as going over to YouTube and watching any type of content that he wanted to, as well as checking his Microsoft Office 365 mail, as well as Microsoft Office 365 Teams and all the rest of the stuff. So he was able to do all of that for the full seven days. That's kind of nice, not bad at all. That is the beauty of Starlink on these ships. But at any rate, when we look at the amount that Carnival Cruise Line spent on this one ship, we see they spent about $60,000 on the hardware and they're paying $30,000 monthly, period. Plus, of course, all of the overage fees. Now, that holds true with cruise lines. Well, now, how about airlines? And this is another one of these things that I think that we need to take into consideration. And The Motley Fool really didn't get into this very deep because airlines are paying a crap ton more than cruise ships are. So when I did some research on this, for high speed, low latency in-flight connectivity globally, all right, these airline companies are going to be spending a whopping $12,000 to $25,000 per month per installation. And these installations cost what? $150,000 each. $150,000. So think about that. For every airplane, you're looking at a $150,000 kit cost, plus anywhere from $12,500 to $25,000 per month. So they're going to be charging a good damn amount of money to the passengers to use this service. But think about the amount of money that SpaceX Starlink is going to make from this. That is just one ship we were talking about before, not an entire cruise line, one ship. This is one airplane, $150,000 for hardware, $12,500 to $25,000 per month for service. And if they go over, just like the maritime plan, this aviation plan is like $2 per gigabyte. So that's $2,000 more for every terabyte over their initial allotment. So in conclusion, I do think that SpaceX Starlink is going to have some rocky roads moving forward because it is a lot to be able to handle all of this coverage that they're trying to handle with only 3,200 satellites up there and a limited number of ground stations and pops. That said, once we see the version twos finally get launched here in 2023, things are going to change rapidly and they're going to be making a lot more money because these satellites are going to be able to do more, handle more and do it quicker, all right? And I do believe if they can't get heavy up there, they're going to be launching these SpaceX Starlink version twos, but a smaller version on the tops of these Falcon 9 rockets. They're going to have to retrofit them, but they're still going to get those version twos up there. Even if they're mini version twos, they will still have the functionality, just slightly less throughput. It'll be a smaller satellite, but that's okay. Put up maybe 10, 20, 50, 100 of the smaller version twos. And then once you can put the version two full-size units up there, 
even better. So that's my prediction of what's going to be happening. And I do not think that we will see SpaceX Starlink faltering anytime soon. I think Elon Musk feels that the Starlink is going to be the breadwinner. That's where he's going to be making the majority of his money going into 2023, 24, 25 going forward. And he has kind of said that already. So there's going to be a lot of concentration put into that in comparison to his other companies. Mark my words. Anyways, before you get out of here, I want to say that if you want more Starlink content, I put together a Starlink playlist. Go check that out. Maybe I'll put a link over here. It is great. About 100 plus videos of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and why. This channel is all about the why, and I hope you guys appreciate that. Also, if you enjoyed this content, please throw this video a thumbs up. That will be very, very helpful for the YouTube gods to look kindly on my channel as well as this video. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, please consider doing so. And then click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, YouTube has given us a thank you button down there. Click that. That would be appreciated. If not, even better, just become a member of the channel. That would be awesome. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you know vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. And we'll see you in the next one. Happy New Year, guys. Love you all.